Okay, we're gonna do some exponential modeling now, and then we're gonna do some later on in this chapter. And I mentioned at the beginning that exponential functions are really good for modeling things. And in particular, they're really good at doing some population growth modeling. And um, we're also gonna have a look at how they're good at things that are decaying or declining as well. And there's two reasons why they're very good at this. First of all, a to the power of x gets a times bigger each time x increases by one. So if x increases by one, a to the power of x plus one, remember your rules of indices, this is a to the power of one multiplied by a to the power of x, adding those powers. So the previous value, which was a to the power of x, is getting a times bigger because x has increased by one. So with population growth, we typically have a fixed percentage increase each year. So suppose the growth was 10% a year, and we use the equivalent decimal multiplier, which is 1.1 as a, then 1.1 to the power of t, where t is the number of years, would get 1.1 times bigger each year. And in the example that we used earlier on, we were looking at money in a bank account with 5% interest. And we use that multiplier as 1.05 to show that each year the compound interest meant that the savings were increasing by 5%. There's a second reason that it's good. The second reason is that the rate of increase is proportional to the size of the population at a given moment. So let's just think about what that's saying. The rate of increase is saying how fast the population is increasing is going to be proportional to the size of the population at a given moment. I've said this makes sense. The 10% increase of a population will be twice as large if the population itself is twice as large. So what we're talking about, the rate of, po um, of the population growing, if you have a big population, you're going to have a lot more people being born into that population than if you have a, a country with a very, very small population. So the rate of increase will be proportional to the size of the population at a given moment. And that allows us to do some things with exponential modelling. Um, so that's why exponentials become useful to do with the differentiation properties. So I've here, said here, suppose that the population P in the Republic of Maths is modelled by P equals 100 e to the 3t, where t is the number of years since the Republic was established. What is the initial population and what is the initial rate of population growth? So we've used this number e here just because it's a really common number for us to use. And we've got this e to the power of 3 is really what's it, what's the multiplier that's happening. So e to the power of 3 is going to be pretty big. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, let's not, let's not leave it. Let's not e to the power of 3. Just ignore what I just said there. Let's just answer the question and make it make a bit more sense because we can't really clearly see what that multiplier is here. First thing it wants us to do is to say, what is the initial population? Now, when I see the word initial population, it means at the start. So at the start, we know that the time is zero. So we're going to say that the initial population, the initial population is when t is equal to zero. So the initial population p would be 100 multiplied by e times um, e to the power of 3 times 0, e to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So it's just going to be that the initial population is 100. So let's just say 100 people were there initially. And it wants us to say, what is the initial rate of population growth? Now, the rate of population growth the word rate, we talked about this in the previous differentiation video, rate means something dt. So the rate of population change is dp dt. This is the rate of population growth. So what we're going to need to do here is differentiate to find out what the rate of growth is. So we've got 100 e to, um, e to the power of 3t. And we're going to say that dp dt, well, that 100 is going to stay there and we're going to multiply it by 3e to the 3t. In other words, it is 300e to the 3t. Now, throughout this chapter, we're only going to be using e here because we don't know how to differentiate things like, I don't know, 2 to the power of t until you get to year 2. So that bit when I was saying earlier, oh, ignore what I'm saying about multipliers. We're only ever going to be doing it with e here because that's the only thing that we know how to differentiate with these exponential functions so far. So that's the rate of population growth as a formula. 
but we want to know what is the initial rate. And we talked about that just now. Initial means at the start, in other words, when t equals zero. So when t equals zero, the rate of population growth is going to be 300 multiplied by e to the zero, which is just 300. And that is standing for 300 people per year. So it's saying that at the very start, the population is expected to increase by 300 people per year. Obviously, that's not just going to be occurring through birth. That's going to be um, occurring through things like immigration and other things that might affect the size of the population. OK. So we're now going to have a look at one that is a population, but it's about a decaying population. So this one is about how much pesticide that there is. It's the amount of pesticide is if you're going to measure that kind of like a population. And we're going to say that it is decaying because this power up here is negative. So we know that the shape of this graph is like this kind here. Let's read the question. It says the density of a pesticide in a given section of field, p milligrams per meter squared, can be modelled by the equation p equals 160 e to the power of negative 0.006 t where t is the time in days since the pesticide was first applied. So this means that the pesticide is, <clears throat> the pesticide is going to decrease in its density. First of all, it wants you to use the model to estimate the density of the pesticide after 15 days. So this is telling us that the, de the density we want to find is when t equals 15. So when t is equal to 15, the density is going to be 160 multiplied by e to the power of minus 0 0.006 multiplied by 15. And we're literally just going to type this straight into the calculator. So it's 160 multiplied by shift and then the ln button that you have here. And I'm going to type in negative 0 0.006 times 15. So that means that when t is equal to 15 days, the estimate is that there is 146.23 milligrams per meter squared. And I have just done that to two decimal places. In part B of the question, it says interpret the meaning of the value 160 in this model. Well, I'm hoping that you can spot this, that this 160 is when the value t here is zero. So when the value of t is zero, the amount of pesticide is 160 milligrams per meter squared. In other words, 160 is the initial density of pesticide. Part C says show that dp dt equals kp, where k is a constant, and state the value of k. So I think the first thing that we're going to need to do here is differentiate it and see what happens. So if p is equal to 160e to the minus 0.006t, when I differentiate it, dp dt, I've got 160. Remember, you pull that power down, so you multiply by negative 0.006, and then you have e to the negative 0.006t. Now, I'm not actually going to multiply these two things together here, because what they want you to do is to say that it is some multiple of the original function. Now, if I just swap these things around a second, you'll see I've got negative 0.006 multiplied by 160 e to the negative 0.006t. This thing that I've got here is this thing that I've got here. It's p. So it is negative 0.006 multiplied by p. So the value of k is negative 0.006. Then it says, interpret the significance of the sign in your answer to part c. So let's just try and see if we can explain this. We have said that dp dt is equal to negative 0.006p. Let's see if we can explain this in words. The rate of change of pesticide density is 
the remaining amount multiplied by negative 0 0.06. In other words, the rate of change of pesticide density is negative. It's negative because it's multiplying it by a negative number. So what it's asking for us to do is to interpret the significance of the sign of your answer in part C. So what this is saying is the amount of pesticide in the field is exponentially decaying, exponentially decaying. Or you could just say the amount of pesticide in the field is decreasing. That's why there's a negative value here. Not only is it proportional to the population, the amount have a, sorry, not as only proportional to the amount of pesticide there, but it is decreasing proportionally to the amount of pesticide there. If, if dpdt was equal to, I don't know, 3p, that would be saying that the pesticide was increasing in proportion because it's a positive number that we've got here. But it's not positive. I just made that one up with the 3p. Last part is it then says, sketch the graph of p against t. Well, look, we've kind of basically already done it over here. So it's going to be pretty easy, OK? We know the three things that we do for this. We're going to do the shape. We're going to do the y-intercept, and we're going to think about if we need to, anything to do with any asymptotes. Remember the equation is, oops, not y, p equals 160 e to the negative 0.006t. Now, we know the shape is a decaying graph. The y-intercept is when t equals 0, and when t equals 0, p is 160, and the asymptote is just going to be the axis still. So here's my sketch. This is the pesticide. This is the time. So it's crossing at 160. Oops. Crossing at 160 up here. And it is going to be decaying over time like this. So that's my 160, and it's a decaying graph. Nothing else you can really show there. You don't need to do any stretches. It's just a decaying graph that looks like this. OK, so we will be doing more modelling later on. But for now, you just need to make sure that you can tell the difference between these two phrases, initial population and rate of population. As soon as you have rate, that word, I want you to think of differentiation. OK, have a go now at doing exercise 14C.